Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the correlation between elevated histamine levels and hair loss and how to correct this issue. So if you've been following these videos for any length of time, then you know that our view of the body and various health imbalances are generally unakin to the conventional viewpoints, and hair loss being one example of that. In the conventional world of medicine, hair loss is often considered to be blamed on either genetics or some sort of unique genetic or hereditary sensitivity to androgens like DHT and testosterone. However, those are simply inaccurate or very easy blanket statements to give somebody when they don't understand what's truly going on. And unfortunately, the whole pathology of hair loss and a lot of health issues are not always fully understood and instead of admitting to that or at least explaining the little bit that is known oftentimes again these blanket statements are thrown out there so in our viewpoint hair loss like any other imbalance in the body is exactly that it's an imbalance or more specifically a male adaptive response to stress so the fact of the matter is our bodies are going to age they're going to degenerate the question is at what rate and obviously most of you would probably agree that the slower the aging process the better so i just wanted to get that out of the way because the ideas that we're going to talk about here in a moment are quite unconventional in this way so many times I see people say that, you know, hair loss is just genetics. There's nothing you can do about it. It's an unfortunate genetic fate. And there's, again, nothing that you can do about it. However, I would argue and I would defer that that's not the case. But the fact of the matter is there's tons of factors that are involved. And everybody experiences stress at a different rate and at a different age. Some people, unfortunately, were born in a biological stress state, whereas others were more fortunate in that way. But the fact of the matter is you can slow the progression of aging and stress and the rate at which you experience those things and preserve your health and youth. And this particular topic of histamine and hair loss is just one example of that, at least again, in my opinion. So diving into the subject matter, what's the correlation between histamine and hair loss? First and foremost, what is histamine? Histamine, for those of you that do not know, is an allergenic substance. It is a inflammatory substance actually that's secreted by the cells in response to injury an allergy or inflammation to basically cope with that potential injury or stressor by relaxing or dilating the capillaries in the smooth wall in this way like other inflammatory substances it's a helpful survival sort of substance however it does have a negative effect on the growth and the rate of hair growth when chronically elevated just like a lot of other stress substances so histamine in my opinion, belongs to a class of stress substances like cortisol and TSH and prolactin and lactic acid and nitric oxide. All of these things that are helpful in the short term to help you cope with stress and respond to injury and inflammation, but over the long term, through their anti-metabolic effects, can negatively affect your overall health and have a particularly negative effect on the growth of the hair. Basically, your body looks at your hair as something that's unimportant to survival. It's a very nice vanity attribute, if you will, and it is indicative of good health. But the point being is that over time, if you're chronically stressed out, your body's going to preserve and use this energy to cope with stress and inflammation and keep your internal organs alive. And it's sort of going to pay less attention to diverting energy to the hair follicle. Now, the specific way in which histamine has this effect, though, is through its effect on the degranulation of mast cells. Basically, there are multiple phases of hair growth. And in any case of hair loss, ultimately what's going on here is that the resting dormant or telogen phase is greatly outnumbering the growth phase. So if your hair is in a dormant phase more than it is in the growing phase, you're obviously going to run into hair loss, just like anything else. If you are spending more money than you're making, you're not going to have much money. You're eventually going to run out of money. So this simple analogy can be applied to the hair and the growth of the hair. Ultimately, what you want is to be in a more growth antigen or a pro-metabolic state where your hair is growing, receiving energy and nutrients to stay in that growth phase with a lesser amount of the resting phase. You can't completely get rid of this resting phase. It's important. You just want it, the ratio to be in balance, more growth to rest. And where histamine and the mast cells come to play is basically during the growing phases of hair, the histamine and mast cells are tightly regulated. Whereas during the resting dormant phases, the histamine and mast cells 
become unregulated, there's a significant increase in histamine, which causes this degranulation of mast cells and basically leads to the fibrosis of the hair follicle and ultimately can lead to baldness in this way. So that's the very simplified version of this. So in fewer words, elevated levels of histamine and degranulated mast cells are actually present during the resting dormant phases, whereas during the growth phases, histamine and mast cells are tightly regulated. So lowering histamine in this way actually is gonna be very preventative and protective to the hair by basically ensuring that your hair stays in a more growth phase than it does a resting phase. And there's actually correlating research with this. For example, asthmatics who tend to have higher levels of histamine, of course, also have 11 to 22%, I believe, elevated levels of prostaglandins. And as I talked about in this video, elevated levels of prostaglandins are a key feature of the balding scalp. So meaning that men who are bald tend to have an accumulation of these inflammatory prostaglandins in the scalp. And there's again a strong correlation between asthmatics, high levels of histamine, and a greater accumulation of these inflammatory prostaglandins. And this is likely due to the fact that a lot of the stress substances that increase histamine, like estrogen for example, also tend to increase the production of prolactin. And prolactin actually activates an enzyme that liberates arachidonic acid from the fats in the body, which is actually a breakdown product of prostaglandins. So in this way, elevated levels of histamine are often going to indicate high levels of estrogen. Those things are usually synonymous. They tend to increase one another, sort of having a feedback loop. And estrogen tends to increase the production of prolactin. And prolactin through this enzymatic reaction can actually increase the levels of the inflammatory prostaglandins. So basically, there's a lot of stress substances that are elevated during baldness and they all tend to suppress the growing phase of the hair and can lead to inflammation. And histamine is just one of those major substances. So I know that this is a lot of information if you're new to these videos, but the basic takeaway here is that you want to take proactive steps to lower histamine. And in fact, hair loss is really just an inflammatory condition anyway. When the hair follicle is starved of energy, it tends to lead to oxidative stress and inflammation. And histamine is just one of those major inflammatory substances. And there is very simple things you can do actually to start to correct this. Now, obviously it's a systemic issue. You're gonna to wanna to find out you know, what is the particular allergen you're responding to, what's maybe elevating the histamine. But on the short term, there are herbs like nettle root that not only have an antihistamine effect through its inhibition of cyclooxygenase 2, as seen here in this study, but nettle root is so fantastic for the hair because it targets all of these things I'm talking about. Nettle root actually also lowers estrogen. And as I mentioned a moment ago, estrogen tends to increase the production of histamine, as well as prolactin. Not to mention that nettle root also tends to lower other inflammatory substances like interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta, which is also elevated in baldness or hair loss. So if you're looking for one simple thing to start to correct a lot of the underlying issues in hair loss, and particularly lower histamine, I would highly recommend looking into the supplementation of nettle root, which again is targeting most of the major imbalances that are occurring in hair loss. So in addition to supplementing with nettle root extract for its not just antihistamine effects, but anti-estrogen and anti-inflammatory effects altogether, there are other simple things that you can do to lower histamine. One of the first things I'd recommend is getting in enough vitamin C and quercetin, which you can find in things like fresh orange juice, and you can also find it in the peels of the oranges, so making your own marmalade would be a really good idea. Also, I'd recommend consuming enough saturated fats and avoiding the polyunsaturated fats. The saturated fats in general tend to protect the body from all the various stressful mechanisms and stress reactions, including the production of histamine. So things like coconut oil are going to be fantastic for anybody experiencing high levels of histamine or allergies. And if you have any potential concerns of a coconut allergy, just make sure that you get the refined coconut oil and that should help with any potential allergy to the coconut oil itself. That's not gonna have really any of the proteins in it and it'll remove any impurities that you might respond to Otherwise, coconut oil and saturated fats are highly protective against histamine and stress in general. So to recap, histamine is without doubt elevated chronically in most conditions of hair loss because it generally suppresses the growth rate or the growth phase 
of the hair. So taking in natural antihistamines like nettle root, quercetin, vitamin C, and saturated fats can be protective from the inflammatory damaging effects of histamine and may potentially even help you to preserve your hair or even start to regrow your hair if that's something that you're dealing with. So that's all I wanted to share in this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Share this video with anybody in need that might find it helpful or useful. And if you're interested in learning more or supplementing with nettle root extract, you can find a high quality nettle root extract on our tonic herb shop in the description box below.